Okay, so we shall move on to our last question. So, what was your biggest win in terms of return on investment and how did you communicate it? Regina, can we go to you first, please? Sure, happy to do that. So when we look at return on investment after any type of um, either activation or for that matter an exercise, how you communicate that those results are really important. So and let me give you an example of an exercise uh, as well. So as I mentioned earlier, we've been doing a large number of cyber breach exercises. We just finished one with a very large central bank that took us 15 months to, pl to plan. The learnings were so critically important, the bank actually did a huge amount of outreach uh, about the actual findings, which included in their organization uh, video presentations, uh, articles within their internal uh, publications uh, for employees, pieces that they actually then delivered to their customers, if you will, the other uh, financial institutions in that country. And what they did is they took it as an opportunity to share what they learned as well as to uh, promote uh, increased preparedness. So what I'm, what I'm building on is that when you have an activation uh, or an exercise, you should be always crafting a well developed after action report. That after action report is so important because what it does is it captures what was learned, but then it also has a lot of ideally observations or what we sometimes might call recommendations, although I, I'm reluctant to use that word because so many of our clients are federally regulated in their countries that the word recommendation has kind of a heavy stick, meaning they have to do it. So we most commonly call those observations. So when we list our observations, we present a, a variety of, of things that they need to do to really solve the problems that were discovered as well as to improve the overall programs. But I think the key thing is that once those uh, after-action reports are developed and they're issued, then internally within any organization, you need to think about what is the what is the way you get those reports, first of all, in front of the right people. Because if you don't get it in front of the right people, it's not going to serve you. So, for example, if you're publicly traded in many parts of the world, you might have to have a, a risk committee on the um, executive committee or board. That would be a great spot for it to go. Obviously to your executives, obviously to your executive sponsors. So, first of all, make a list of who are the people that you need to get this in front of, whether it's an after-action report after a real incident or one after an exercise. Who needs to see it? How can you build some support for those observations slash recommendations? What is your overall strategy to get those things in the right eyes and so that they can actually make some decisions? And often those, often those have financial consequences. So how are you going to make that happen? So that should be part of your process. And then what you want to make sure is that once those observations have been uh, seen by the right people, they have been blessed, and then uh, they are then a task to be um, accomplished. And how are you going to do that? And how are you going to track that? And how are you going to make sure that those things happen so that you can continue to constantly provide value? Uh, so whether it's a real activation or an exercise, that's really, really important. So I think after action reports and your plan and process for getting those in front of the right people all the appropriate follow-up and then rescheduling an exercise to see if you improved, really important. Um, and then and then really to, to build on that piece is to really go back to your internal marketing plan that hopefully you're going to design after this uh, webinar about how you can market your program. What do you need to do to tweak it to make sure that you're, again, telling your story about a great exercise you did or a great activation and how you successfully accomplished that or, wow, we had lots of mistakes, the boy really learned, always turning it into a positive thing. And then, and then utilize all the possible tools you have to your disposal. So whether that's, you know, social media. So maybe you have a, a Facebook or Twitter account, Instagram, and whatever those um, uh, platforms you're using, LinkedIn. Uh, and some of those could be internally facing only, like an internal Facebook page or an internal Twitter account. So making sure that people know what you're doing. Uh, and then also placing that in your overall communications within the organization so that people can see what you've done. I think it's really important to utilize every opportunity you have to provide value. And I think you, talking about your exercises is one of the best ways because, frankly, we don't have a lot of activations, but exercises are the closest things that many of us get to. So selling those things as well. Excellent points, Regina. Excellent point. Uh, Matt, could I ask you to uh, chime in, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the way I look at this is uh, I look at this kind of on two different fronts. So 
you know, from an ROI standpoint, what can we do monetarily and how are we saving money? So kind of before, how are we doing things today? And then after, you know, after an event, how did we, how did we accomplish utilizing the different tools that we have at our disposal and the different plans that we've, that we've created? So today, here's, you know, here's what we've done. Here's how long it took us to respond to an incident. And, you know, afterwards, here's how much we improved. So that's a, you know, from a monetary standpoint, in many cases, that's, that's, that can be easier to, uh, to look at. So if there's an IT outage or an asset outage, you know, how do we, how do we, you know, how fast did we respond? So, you know, did we minimize the downtime by five minutes, by ten minutes? And then in, the, in that downtime, you know, how much does that cost us? So how much money did that save us? So that's a little bit easier. The other aspect I look at uh, is, is how, do we, how did we respond in terms of just keeping people safe and informed? Um, so, you know, that's something that when you look at a, a Paris or Brussels situation, you know, how did we track our, our staff and make sure they were accountable and safe? And, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's a little bit tougher because, you know, now you need to make sure you, you, you know, before, how did we do this? Um, so was it a call tree um, or was it just an email and hope that people respond? And then afterwards, if we've got other tools at our disposal, whether it's an ENS tool or some other types of, uh, you know, whether, as Regina mentioned, utilizing different social media outlets, or other internal uh, systems. So how did we do that after the fact, and how did we improve upon that? Um, so, you know, that's something that's, that's really, really important is to, after an event like that, how quickly were we able to skate, make everybody accountable and make sure our staff was safe and accounted for? And that's something that, um, you know, and, and the question about is how do we communicate these types of results? If you are utilizing a communication method, again, whether it's an ENS or internal uh, internal programs, social media, other systems, you know, that naturally communicates it. So when you start to get people, you know, getting people's responses and seeing that information flow and those messages go out and the response is coming back into your system, um, into your, you know, into your reports and, as Regina mentioned, into your after actions, you know, people will naturally see that, especially if you're communicating on a mass scale and you're getting that information back. So... Um, and then you want to obviously compile that information. And if the executives weren't already aware of it, uh, they're definitely aware of it now. And, you know, make sure that it hits them right in the face that says, hey, this is what we did during this event, and this is what changed versus our old methods of doing things versus what we're doing today, and here's how much faster we were able to do it based on, you know, our BC plans and the tools that we purchased or the different tools that we use. Hey, that's uh, very insightful. Um, David, could I ask you to chime in, please? Yeah, Andrew, these are all really good points. Um, I'm just going to give one example, if I may. And uh, one really good return on investment, you could say, was uh, I'm going back six years now, but we were operating in a uh, North African country. And at the time, uh, there was a crisis where uh, the main emphasis on the surface of it was to reduce the risk to people. And a lot of the emphasis was the one withdrawing, drawing down people and evacuating. So actually what we had to do was to balance that need with the need to maintain business in that country because we were operating business which was critical to the host government and we were operating business which was critical to, to our survival as well. So what we were looking at was uh, a huge range of stakeholders and a lot of pressure from government, host government, public perception, shareholder, another stakeholder perception. There were political aspects, economic aspects, social aspects, but what we were able to do was actually use business continuity planning that we'd done in order to understand what was needed to keep, keep the business going at the level we needed to keep it. And and that really made the difference between uh, an unnecessarily chaotic uh, management of a crisis to something which had some order and structure and had some sort of priorities and uh, actually resulted in us maintaining the business, doing what business continuity needs to do, but also maintaining safety of life. So how do we communicate that? Well, we... We really worked through uh, an advocate, and for me the advocate was the regional executive vice president, because he, he understood this. He could see, and we had some face time with him as we worked through it, and he could see that this was the difference between him keeping his bonus and him losing his bonus and possibly his job. But more importantly, it was absolutely key. Business continuity was key to very rapidly getting that balance. And I think, you know, 
if, if he was a successful ad advocate for us, I think the Microsoft would call it an evangelist maybe, but he, he was our communication tool, if you like. And we didn't need to shout about it because we had people who could see the value who were doing it for us.